Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses duties and practices of Muslims by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'a. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, how is your health? Alhamdulillah, fine. Sheikhna, we've been talking about Salah, we've been talking about the different dhikr of Salah, and also we've been going through different miscellaneous questions. Now, the question I have for you, uh, Sheikhna, is if a person starts with Surah Alhamd or intends to recite Surah Alhamd uh, but for some reason they can't complete it maybe they've forgotten an ayah or um, I don't know whatever whatever's happened they don't they don't know the Surah what does that person do in that situation A'udhu Billah As-Sami'an Ali Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Sallallahu Ala Muhammad Wa Alihi Al-Tayyibin Al-Tahirin Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammad Wa Muhammad um, with regard to this mas'ala, uh, his prayers and salah will be void and batil. Uh, the one who cannot recite Surah Al-Hamd by heart, um, um, they have to repeat the salah. Stop, repeat the salah again. And uh, the best thing to do is to get um, a copy of the Qur'an or to open the Qur'an um, in somehow and read uh, Surah Al-Hamd from the Quran itself, okay. while he's praying, and that's fine. That's uh, and you can use your phone issue. if you have a Quran exactly. app on your anything, phone. Exactly, you anything that you can you can hold or you can I mean read out of. Um, let's say you have Surah Al-Hamd on the wall hanging, so you read Surah Al-Hamd from something from a, a page or a book, uh, you know the holy book of Quran, and uh, that should be uh, sufficient. Otherwise, you can't begin the salah and you don't know the Hamd. Uh, by heart, that's uh, an issue that you have to make sure uh, the one who, let's say those who are reverts or newly um, became baler, uh, they must also um, bear in mind this point that they have to read the Surah Al-Hamd, it's a wajib in, in, in every salah, obligatory salah, to read the Surah Al-Hamd, but from uh, a book or from a you know, let's say they can photocopy the page of Surah Al Hamd and hold it and read it, that's fine. Shaykhna, what if someone can't uh, read Surah Al Hamd? Um, is it okay to listen to audio and, and follow the audio? Anything that helps the one to recite Surah Al Hamd in Salah, the, the, the important thing that you perform Surah Al Hamd correctly in the Salah. Okay. So either somebody reads, reads it for, uh, for you, let's say your, your parents, your brother, your okay. sister, somebody who is next to you, he reads it out for you, and you repeat it in salah, you, re yes. you recite it in salah, or out of paper, out of your mobile phone, uh, something hanging on the wall. In any how, you must recite Surah Al-Hamd fully and correctly in Arabic uh, while you're praying. Ahsan, Shaykhna. Shaykhna, you know, I've, I've, I've noticed this sometimes in prayer. Um, Someone's reciting, and they, they, you know, in Jama'ah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, mm, and then they start to decide what surah to recite. I mean, is that okay to identify the surah at Bismillah, or, you know, is Bismillah isn't it a part of the the surah? So we should be identifying before, and then start with Bismillah. Our ulama in overall they say that Bismillah is part of every surah, every surah is not separate from Bismillah, which is in the Quran. Unlike some other sects of Islam in which they would neglect and ignore the Bismillah when they start uh, uh, the Surah. So they would say, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. They've ignored and took out, uh, as the hadith of one of the Ahlul Bayt Islam says that one of the main a'dam ayah, one of the greatest ayah in the book of Allah they ignored it, they neglected it yes. from the Salah. So Bismillah is part of every Surah. However, some ulama might argue that when you say Bismillah and you identify that Surah, this Bismillah is only for this Surah. Yes. Khalas. But the Sayyid says no. Um, when you say Bismillah, you can choose any Surah. Okay. At the end of the day, 
the surah that you've chose, it becomes part of this, bismillah. Yes. So that's fine. You don't have to um, um, choose uh, a surah before saying bismillah. So you can say bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and then choose any surah Mashallah. you want to read. Mashallah, I didn't know that, Mashallah. Exactly. Very good. Shaykhna, as you know that there are many styles and different methods of reciting Quran, and in regards to Salah and Surah Tawheed in particular, I've heard people say Kufa wan Ahad, I've heard people say Kuf an Ahad. Is it uh, permissible to recite Kuf an Ahad? Well, it should be recited as stated in the Holy Quran Kufu wan Ahad. This is the correct way of uh, reciting the, this particular word in uh, Surah Tawheed. Um, and the Quran is brought and descended by one qira'ah. We don't accept other qira'at and recitations. This is the correct qira'ah and recitation. So we follow this uh, basic and main uh, qira'ah, which is in the Quran. Kufu wan ahad. Shaykhna, is it okay for a musalli to recite a surah which he knows that he doesn't know it properly or 100% or he may make mistakes in it is it okay for him to actually begin that surah and then later on if he completes it jayid no problem but if he makes a mistake okay no worries I'll choose another one so yes if the individual wants to begin the salah with let's say surah at-takathur or surah al-layl and he's not sure that if he memorized all the ayat mm. and the verses then he should start with another surah that he's certain, like Surah Al-Kawthar, Ibn Atanak Al-Kawthar. Very easy, yes. short ayat, and that's it. So, no, we shouldn't start with uh, an uncertain uh, surah in the salah. Shaykhna, is it okay for individuals, Musadis, to carry a small Quran with them or uh, you know, a Quran app that they can you know, open and read? Uh, while they're praying salah, so they can re you know, recite a surah rather than try to memorize it, just open it and just read it off the Quran. There is no objection to that, um, especially if you want to read, um, for example, um, a lengthy uh, surah in salah. There are um, many narrations that encourage that is a mustahab to read, for example, Surah al Saf. Mm -hmm. Surah Al-Jum'ah to read on the day of, Fr day of Friday, Friday. Yes. and so forth. These are mustahab uh, surah to read in, in Salah. Of course, we haven't memorized, most of us, or many of us, do not memorize all uh, the chapters in, in Salah in, 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 uh, for the Quran. So, and it's difficult to read them in Salah. So yes, you can carry, carry Quran and read uh, that surah uh, from the Quran, and inshallah you gain uh, the thawab and reward for reading that lengthy surah in salah. Inshallah. Shaykhna, when we're in Jama'ah prayer, um, obviously the, the Imam of the Jama'ah is reciting, uh, we're encouraged to say, stay silent. Um, can we actually, you know, do some dhikr? Isn't that better than, you know, staying silent? Well, it's mustahab for the one who is uh, standing behind an Imam in the Jama'a Salah to say dhikr let's say subhanallah la ilaha illallah and so forth um, when the imam or when the salah is salat al-dhur and asr salah in which is read especially the, the first and the second rak'ah when we are we keep silent and we don't talk we don't read anything and the imam is only the one who reads the hamd and surah in salat al-dhur and asr mustahab that you say dhikr Again, quietly. So he says, Subhanallah, 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 Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah. While the Imam reading Alhamd and Surah himself, he's yes. reading as well quietly and silently. Um, that's mustahab. However, for the Maghrib and Isha and Salat al Subuh, Fajr Salah, um, it's better to listen to the Imam when he's reading. So it's better to uh, listen to the Imam of the Jama'ah when he recites Alhamd and Surah in Salat al Fajr, Maghrib and Isha. Uh, loud and uh, to reflect and ponder to the words, to the ayat he's, he's actually reciting. Uh, but although um, the individual can also say dhikr, that's fine. So the, you, can, you can listen to the imam and you can still uh, say dhikr, la ilaha illallah, subhanallah. Yes. That's fine. Uh, 
Sheikh Ahmad, don't you think it's difficult for reverts to, um, you know, uh, to, to learn the language of Arabic uh, and, and to recite Surah Alhamd and, and, and recite Salah? What, I mean, what's the best thing for them? For those reverts, uh, those who convert to Islam and they are not Arabs originally, especially in the West, um, they need to learn Arabic at least for the acts of Salah. Uh -huh. So they try to learn saying Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alim, and so forth. They try to learn. If they find extreme difficulty in, in pronouncing and learning these words, or they haven't got time to, you know, let's say it's got only five, ten minutes to sunrise or sunset, and it's not the time to learn. Uh, in this case, they can actually uh, do the rest with their own language. So he can say okay. Allahu Akbar, but the other acts of Salah, he says or she says it in, in her own language, for example. If it's English, then in English. Um, but however, the Sayyid says it's mustahab precaution mm -hmm. for such individuals to attend Jama'ah, oh, to okay. pray behind the Jama'ah, yeah, sure. so they could be able to learn, 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 learn from the Jama'ah and at least um, they won't fall into such uh, issues. Ahsan, Sheikhna. Very good. Sheikhna, how does one um, pray his uh, qada prayers or prayers that he owes? Maybe there were some salah that were batil he has to repeat. So how does one uh, pray his repeated prayers when he's not sure how many days or how many weeks, God forbid, uh, he owes? For example, if he's saying that, oh, I don't know how much I owe. I know it's between seven and ten days of salah that I owe, but I don't know how many. What does one do in that situation? This individual needs to go back and to see what is certain amount of missed uh, prayers. And he considers only the, the least. So he says, at least I have ten days, khalas. You just have to repeat ten days and forget the other doubts, so, you know, the 12 or 15 days. So you do at least the certain ones that you think they are actually uh, the ones you've missed. And anything else, you have to just ignore it. So you do the least, uh, the certain ones, and inshallah will be accepted. The, these qada uh, prayers or these prayers that are about, I mean, we, we, how important is it that you pray, the, uh, you pray them back and when should you do it? Should you wait for a significant time? Oh, when I have free time or this or that, or is it mandatory to do it as soon as possible? Of course, the soonest the better. Uh, but however, there's an easy way to do the qada, um, as mentioned in, in the Risala of the Sayyid and others, that um, you consider, let's say, with every wajib salah you pray every day. So yes. let's say you've missed uh, 10 days of salah. So you have salat al subuh when you pray tomorrow morning, when you finish the, the two rak'ah wajib, yes. you add to it afterwards, after the salam, you add to another rak'ah with the intention of qada, that I make it up. Yes. Uh, now, as qada, and, and, and that's it. Simple. Also, you have salat al asr coming. Again, you finish salat al asr, you add another dhur al asr. Yes. As, as a qada. So uh, what you can say is that just, and Maghrib Asha, same to thing. just double up on the prayers. Exactly. Uh, and just do that for how many days exactly. uh, you, you're supposed to do it for. And it's a very easy, quick way to uh, exactly. take back what you Just to make you things owe. easier. Because if you want to sit down and imagine that you have not 10 days, maybe 100 days yes. of salah you have that, that you missed, you didn't pray as qada, then it's huge to yes. pray 100 salah days uh, imagine how many hours it would take. Indeed. So if you break them down, let's say in installments, yes. every day with every pray, then that should make it uh, inshallah. very easy. Inshallah. inshallah. Thank you very much, Sheikh, especially for that uh, analysis and that method to help those people who do have qadha prayers that to pray them as soon as possible. And uh, you know, Sheikh has given you a great method if you have a great deal, God forbid you have, but inshallah you have a very, very small amount. But do pray your qadha prayers and also please, please take precaution and concentrate in your salah because you do not want that to go battle. Thank you very much for joining us on Ihkam SOS and inshallah we'll be seeing you on the next episode where we'll discuss the prayer further inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.